The global economy faces another year of a slow but steady growth, the International Monetary Fund said yesterday. At the same time, high inflation and weak demand in China and Europe were named as the main obstacles. The global economy will also be hit by secondary effects from two regional conflicts. Experts at the world's largest financial institution named the economic power of the United States as the main force that pushes global output. We expect inflation to ease throughout the year and put the Fed Reserve in a position where it can begin to cut interest rates, but it may not be as fast as the markets anticipated. IMF Chief Economist Pierre Oliver Gurishka uh, Gurinchas uh, warned. American data on a consumer and producer prices surprised the markets a few days ago. The UK inflation data released today is higher than expected. The CPI rose to 3.2% year-on-year in March, 0.1% higher than the consensus of a 3.1% increase. The core CPI also slipped to 4.2% and also missed the forecast of 4.1%. The annual CPI for March in the euro area is also still above the ECB's target level of 2% and the annual inflation rate was confirmed at 2.4% in the EU. As a result, the pound sterling outperformed all G10 peers and led the recovery against the US dollar. The US currency itself fell on early Wednesday against almost all of its counterparts in the G10 and G20 groups. Statistics for these countries published today showed that the United States and the dollar no longer stand out so distinctly against other leading economies. Before the greenback deemed to be the index trading modestly today within an intradecade between 106.07 and 106.44, as many Fed Reserve policymakers have said, they have revised the forecast for inflation, returning to the 2% target. And now the deflation process will be much slower than previously expected. And this could delay the timeline for the Fed's rate cuts. The Fed Reserve Chairman cleared up this forecast yesterday. Also, Jerome Powell's comments indicate that the U.S. central bank will begin cutting its interest rates no earlier than September. These prospects should lift the U.S. dollar again in the near future. Moreover, the American regulator, by all indications, will lag behind the ECB, which has already given a signal about a possible rate cut in June. On the back of reports released today about a sustained slowdown in inflation, this issue can already be considered almost resolved. Markets have already priced in the ECB rate cut. Hence, the inflation data did not particularly affect market sentiment. By the way, the New York session closed yesterday without any notable changes. The S&P 500 lost just 0.2% at closing, but compared to the levels reached last month, the index has already plunged by a total of 4%. However, the stability of the U.S. economy suggests good corporate revenues in the first quarter. Therefore, in anticipation of a new earnings reports, the S&P 500 is trading higher today within an interdecade between 5,068 and 5,078 points. The economic calendar is almost empty for the rest of the day, so the overbought U.S. dollar, of course, puts pressure on the both the currency and stock markets. At the same time, the euro dollar pair entered the oversold zone. Both of these factors indicate a possible upward correction. However, for now, the euro has been stuck in a bear trend. Therefore, today the euro dollar pair even tested the lower border of an intradecade between 1.0610 and 1.0654. On the other hand, 
the euro now reacts much more strongly to the economic news and ignores signals of a technical analysis. After recent break over the key support level of 1.2730 from which the price has already rebounded several times since December, the euro continues to move into a bearish zone. Amid bullish sentiment on the US dollar, we can expect a further decline in the single currency. The euro dollar is likely to fall lower to the next support level of 1.0570. Otherwise, 1.0600 could act as support and encourage an upward retracement. Oil prices remain in a limbo and also under the influence of the news, for example, Israel's threats to respond to Iran's attack. In a normal situation, this would contribute to a steady rally in the oil market. Washington is making every effort to keep Tel Aviv from an even greater escalation in the Middle East. And this information cannot determine a further trajectory in oil prices. However, if tensions is even slightly, oil may well drop below $89 per barrel. Currently, the benchmark brand is still trading along the level of $90 with an amplitude of a plus or minus 1.5%. And the technical analysis only point to the flat market and accumulation of a trading forces. You have watched the market review by InstaForex analysts for Wednesday, April 17. Subscribe to InstaForex TV channel and we keep you updated on all market developments. Feel free to ask any questions and leave your comments. I'll see you online tomorrow.